Be me and my two brothers. Be all in our early 20s. Be about five years ago. Decide to take the ATVs out innerwoods for a few nights of camping, hunting, and general gun faggotry. Grandfather owns a farm that backs up to mountains. Mostly it's private property there, so no hikers or recreationalists. No one patrols the area so we do whatever the fuck we want up there. First night out we come across a huge abandoned brick building. Collapsed walls and no roof, looks unsafe. Decide to make camp outside. Later that night, we're telling ghost stories and Sean, older brother, dares my younger brother, Zach, to go in the building. After a lot of arguing, I end up tagging along. We can't figure out what the building used to be, no traces of a fire, but the construction seems modern to the past 60 years. Most of the doors are long rotted away so we can check out almost every room, pretty much empty, though some rooms have metal bed frames inside. No skeletons, no old torture devices, nothing worth writing about. In the floor of one of the back rooms is one door in the floorboards, looks like a cellar, that's still locked and we can't get open. We can feel cold air rushing out around the edges, a cave? I look at Zach, and he looks at me. Both of us hear faint, but distinct noises like somebody muttering behind the door. We realize our flashlights must be visible on the other side of the door. Voices stop at the same time. We nope the fuck out of there. Shitting our pants, we rush back outside to report to Sean on what we saw. Sean has his point .303 drawn and is pointing into the woods just beyond our campsite. Ask what the fuck he's doing. Says nothing. Doesn't lower rifle. At this moment, hear noises like a voice muttering just out of sight in the woods. Shine flashlight, but can't see anything. Voice stops when flashlight hits a particularly dense thicket of trees. Lower flashlight. Voice starts up again, but louder and more insistent. Sean mag dumps in the direction of the thicket, reloads, and mag dumps again. When my ears stop ringing, I realize that either there's either a lot of wind right now or there are a lot of things moving out in the woods. Can't feel any wind in the air. Have the feeling that I'm being watched by many, many things out there. Hear an ATV being started up in the engine revving. Suddenly realize Zach is nowhere to be seen. Zach drives up on his ATV and tells us to get our shit together, he's getting out of there. Me and Sean don't bother getting our shit together, and leave camp the way it is. Both of us mount our ATVs, stowing our rifles and we are on our way back to the farm in the next minute. Engines are just too loud to hear anything else in the woods. Get to the second of two water crossings, and Zach's ATV dies midstream. Water is deep enough to almost cover all four wheels. First thought is that water got in the air intake. He tries to start it, but the engine doesn't even turn over. Water in the engine for sure. Moonlight is slightly shining through the trees, illuminating the stream now. We can see Zach's ATV, right in the middle of the creek. As me and Sean dismount and are talking about how we're going to tow the waterlogged ATV out of the stream, three things happen very fast. We hear some sort of blood-curdling roar, from the direction of the trail behind us, but very close. A small tree falls into the creek only about 50 yards upstream of us, not from the same direction of the roar. Zach, hearing and seeing the above two events, jumps off the ATV and tries to wade to shore. But because the current is relatively swift, and the cobble-sized rocks on the creek bottom are slick with algae, he slips, hits his head on his own ATV, goes under, and next thing we know, he surfaces a little ways downstream, floating face down. As I'm shitting my pants in rapid succession for the fourth, fifth and sixth times that night, Sean jumps into the creek like a hero and semi-swims, semi-floats, semi-runs, splashing down the shallow waterway to save our little brother. It's at this point that I realize that the downed tree has been floating downstream this whole time. It collides with Zach's stuck ATV. Zach's ATV comes unstuck. Both tree and ATV drift slash grind downstream. Zach and Sean go around a bend and are now out of sight. I start up my ATV and drive downstream along the shore toward them. Long story short, my ATV now gets stuck in deep mud and I'm on foot running and splashing downstream to where I think they are. Can't see shit except scattered reflections on the water. No flashlight. No rifle. All I am sure of is that the downed tree and Zach's ATV are still grinding very slowly towards me from somewhere upstream. Suddenly come around a bend and see them. Both are on the same side bank as me, just close enough to make out what they are doing by the moonlight. Sean is huddled over Zach's body on a gravel bar, administering CPR. 
Don't freak out since Sean has been a lifeguard, and I know that Zack is in good hands. Suddenly I become aware of movement in the woods between me and them. Can't see shit in the darkness, but it sounds like a whole family of things moving slowly toward my two brothers. Try to call out. Can't. Voice no longer works. Devise plan to creep out into the middle of the creek and float down to where brothers are so the things don't see me. Try to put it into action. Hear rustling right behind me. Can't move. Something is walking deliberately towards me. Two somethings. Two bipedal somethings. One of the somethings touches my back. I jump about 10 feet into the air, slip, fall, float, flail and eventually swim to the shore. When I look up, Sean and Zach are standing right there. I look downstream to the gravel bar I saw them on before. Nothing there. Sean says he pulled Zach out of the creek upstream and then they saw me drive past on my ATV. They followed until they found it stuck on the bank, and eventually found me standing here. Ask Sean if he gave Zach CPR. Says he didn't have to, Zach hit his head, but didn't lose consciousness. Many things don't add up, but we agree to get the fuck out of the woods as quick as we can. Everybody piles onto Sean's ATV like we're some Asian family and we eventually make it out of the woods into the farm. After a few days, we decide to go back to get our stranded ATVs and abandoned camping gear. We start out very early in the morning so as not to end up anywhere after dark, and we all go heavily armed and with lots of heavy rope for towing stuck ATVs. Can't find either ATV, but when we get to the campsite, all of our gear is packed up neatly and considerately in a big pile. It's broad daylight, but we all have a distinct feeling we're being watched. We pack up the gear and nope the fuck out of there, and never go back. Five years wasn't that long ago, and we talk about going back there all the time, but to this day, none of us has ever had the balls to seriously propose a trip back there. Motherfucking Bigfoot every time. What state is this? Wyoming. What the fuck man? So Terry's shit in the woods watching you, a creepy mysterious house, and you saw things that didn't happen, ATVs went missing and something packed your stuff for you? Four spooky would not go camping with. At least it wasn't a skinwalker. Skinwalkers. Oh shit nigga, don't speak of those. A buddy of mine lives near a res, has some real freaky stories about them. Aha, uh -huh, I wouldn't worry about it. 